Welcome to the newest edition of the Giant Settle Podcast. John Schmelk with you, today's guest, Jim Nagy, the executive director of the Reese's Senior Bowl. As a reminder, the Giant Settle Podcast can be found on the Giants mobile app, your podcast platforms everywhere, and at Giants.com slash podcast. And if you're on Apple Podcasts, please leave a five-star positive review. Jim Nagy, he joins us every year, sometimes more than once. Today, he's going to be previewing the Reese's Senior Bowl. We will be out there uh, at the Reese's Senior Bowl in Mobile, Alabama, uh, coming up the first week of February. Jim, thanks for being with us, man. How's your early year treating you? Uh, John, thanks for having me back on. Things are good, man. We're, we're cranking. We got, uh, there's a lot going on here in Mobile. We're uh, a couple of days away here from the HBCU Combine. We got players actually showing up tomorrow for that. Top 40 HBCU players in the country for this first ever Combine event that we're, that we're doing in conjunction with the NFL League office um, and their football operations. So uh, a lot going on, man, but it's, uh, it's great. We're excited. Uh, and, and we're going to get to game th- in, in a second, but you were in NFL scouting circles for a long time. I want to ask you about the Giants hire as a general manager, Joe Shane. I'm sure if you don't know him personally, you, you've heard a lot about him. Your take on the hire. Yeah, no, I, I know Joe really well. Uh, we, we got into the business uh, right at the same time. So uh, I've known Joe for a long, long time. They got a, they got a really good one. You know, I, I, that's why I kind of made a point of tweeting something out because the, again, there's always a lot of information out there and, from people that really don't know these guys. So uh, like when I, when guys do get hired that, that I know and I've been on the road with and um, have familiarity with, and I, I know the type of worker they are. Um, I just like to throw my two cents out there just to let the fan bases know that, Hey, I think, you know, I think you got a good one. So um, I wouldn't say anything if it, uh, if I thought it was a bad hire. So <laughs> I would never, I would never do that. So no, I'm, I'm excited for Joe and his family to get that opportunity uh, you know, he, he is a, he is a smart guy. He's a really hard worker. He loves digging in and trying to find players. Um, so no, I think, I think they got the right guy for the job. Happy. I'm really happy for Joe. Can you dig in a little bit deeper? Why you think he is the right man for the job and is going to do a good job trying to bring the giants back to playoff contention? Yeah, man, he's smart. He's a professional. Um, uh, I've been with him in, in many, many settings, whether it's, uh, it is at a school visit, you know, tons of times or, or at all-star games or combine. I mean, he, he handles himself like a professional. He's good in a building. He can connect with people. I think you'll see that right away dealing with him, uh, you know, in, in all the media stuff, he'll do a great job there. Um, you know, and then really, really the most recent one was, and again, I, I think I tweeted this out too, um, Joe came down here to Mobile. He was he was staying in, in New Orleans recently at the end of the season when you guys were playing the Saints. Um, and he was over in his hotel and, and saw that Coastal Carolina was playing South Alabama the day after Thanksgiving. And um, again, I've tried to make that point. Like a lot of guys at Joe's level, you know, being the number two guy of an organization, you know, they've got they have a bunch of scouts going through to see those players, the Sun Belt players, right? Like they've got area scouts and, and over the top scouts, regional scouts. Um, so Joe just could have sat in his hotel and worked, you know, finished up reports from the week or done whatever he wanted to do. But the fact that he got in the car and drove, you know, a four hour round trip to, uh, see Isaiah likely and, and Jalen Tolbert, um, two players that they're, they're, they're good players. They're top hundred players. Um, you know, they're, and they're going to be here in the senior bowl. So it's not like he was going to find uh, a couple of diamonds in the rough, but the fact that he was motivated enough to do that, I, I just don't think a lot of guys that sometimes elevate to the level Joe's at, um, you know, would have taken that initiative. So again, it's just a little anecdotal piece, but I, I feel like it kind of speaks to to how, who Joe is and, and how he operates. Yeah, not surprising at his press conference, Jim, he said he basically had seen, I think he said, I think he indicated in person all the top four rounds worth of players that were on the Bills board before he came over to the Giants. So not surprising that, you know, he took that extra trip out there on the road. Now, as of this recording, the Giants have not hired a head coach. Uh, when this gets posted, they probably will have. I went back and I kind of looked at your path, and I think you might have crossed paths with with some of the guys the Giants have done the in-person interviews with. Uh, you have Patrick Graham, who Giant fans are obviously very familiar with, Leslie Frazier, Brian Flores, uh, Ben Brian Dable, and – uh, Dan Quinn, your thoughts on that group and, and just anything that jumps out to you, if any of those guys that you're particularly familiar with. Yeah, a lot of great options, um, a lot of great options. So I was with, I was with Dayball in New England and Kansas City. I was with Dan in, in Seattle um, and I was with Flo in, in New England as well. So no, those I can speak really to those three again, just like I, I tweeted out when the Giants had narrowed it down to Ryan Poles, Adam Peters and Joe Shane for the GM job. I mean, just those three guys specifically who I've, I've been on the same staff with, it's one thing to like cross paths with a guy and it's another thing to work in the same building and be in draft meetings with them too. I mean, 
I, I kind of chuckle sometimes when people talk about how great the evaluator is. Well, you don't really know how, how, how good of an evaluator is unless you've been in that building with him and sat through meetings and heard him talk about players. Like, that's why, I mean, I'm sure Joe is a good evaluator, but I've, I've never worked on the same staff with him. So I don't know that. So I'm not going to speak to that, but um, you know, just being on the same staff with Dave's and in flow and, in DQ, uh, those any of those three would be would be great options for the New York Giants. All right, let's get into the game here, Jim. Talk about the class this year. Uh, when you look at it, how does it compare to to some of the past classes you have, and and what really gets you excited about it? Yeah, you know, we're coming off a record breaking year. Last year, we had 106 players drafted, which was 41 percent of the entire draft class. So, um, you know, but we really like this group. Uh, you know, I think this group rivals that group. I'll be interested to see where the numbers end up shaking out. Um, but, you know, I think you can start at the quarterback position uh, just in my time with ESPN and being on the media side. I kind of know how the quarterbacks drive that bus now. <laughs> wasn't really aware of that before when I was working in the NFL. Wasn't, wasn't really paying attention to that. But, uh, but to have five of the top six quarterbacks in this year's draft here in Mobile is going to be huge. And the fact that there is really uncertainty um, within that group. I think when you... You know, we talk to every team in the league trying to put our put our board together and, and, you know, come up with our rosters. So, you know, I have a pretty good understanding of where teams feel with these guys. And again, there, there's really no order. There's no consensus. Um, I think if you threw out the, the five names, you know, Kenny Pickett from Pitt, Desmond Ritter from Cincinnati, Carson Strong from Nevada, Sam Howell from North Carolina, Malik Willis from Liberty. Um, you know, that that stack is going to be different regardless, you know, depending on which team you talk to. So a lot of intrigue there. Uh, really deep tight end class, really good tackle class. I like the runners. I like the running backs and, uh, you know, really deep edge class as well. I think there's five or six edge rushers that uh, will be in the first round conversation for a lot of teams. Oh, and we're definitely going to uh, dig into some of those position groups. Why do you think the senior bowls become such a kingmaker for the quarterback position? And, and I really think that's kind of where, and I hate to use the expression, but I'll use it. The hype train kind of starts for these guys. When you really see them in this environment, why do you think the senior bowl ha has been such a great platform for these quarterbacks to really help cement their place on some of these draft boards? Because it's real football. Um, you know, like the rest of the process, these guys are going to be in shorts and t-shirts. So, um, there's 21 other guys on the field and they're, they're having to do things they have to do in a football game. They got to re, you know, read coverages and make adjustments. Um, so, so no, it, it has been, I mean, you look just back over the, like the last 10 years, whether it's, you know, the Josh Allens and Dak Prescott's and Russell Wilson's and Kirk Cousins and Derek Carr and, you know, the list of Justin Herbert. Um, so Daniel it, it has Jones. been. Yeah, and, da and Daniel Jones. So, um, by the way, I was really, I was really happy to see John Mara's comments about Daniel. Um, I think w whether you're in the camp of Daniel Jones or not, and I am, um, I think what I think John Mara nailed it um, in yeah. terms of what, where Daniel's at, and why he's there in terms of his development. Um, but anyway, uh, no, back to the football part. You know, they're just asked to do stuff they weren't really asked to do in college. You know, the the NFL is trying to get as close to apples as apples as possible. And sometimes when you're watching the college game, it's really apples to oranges. So um, for these guys to come down here, huddle up, spit out verbiage, get to the line of scrimmage, get under center. Um, there's just, in, you know, bond with a new group of guys quickly. Um, you know, I think we saw that last year with, with Mac Jones did a nice job um, of coming in, learning the playbook, knowing where to go on day one. Like Daniels was more of a progression. You know, he actually had a, a rougher day, day one. Mm -hmm. Wednesday started off throwing a couple of picks right at the beginning of practice on Wednesday and then got better and better and better. Uh, like Matt came out last year, go, you know, guns a blaze in day one. I mean, he knew where to go with the ball. The ball was coming out quick. Um, so, so no, there's just, there's just a lot of great takeaways. And again, I think seeing, I think that helped Justin Herbert, you know, like there was this, there was this narrative out there that Justin Herbert was an introvert. Um, and then for teams to see him in a new environment with all these new players and to see by the end of the week, how the, the, the guys had gravitated to Justin, uh, yeah, is he, is he the most outgoing guy? Probably not. He's not the most rah-rah guy, but he did something over the course of the week. Um, and it was, it was obvious that his teammate, he'd pulled his teammates in somehow. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's a great evaluative tool our week for the, for the teams at that position in all positions. Um, but yeah, the track record of QBs has been really good. You know, last year was a pandemic year and a lot of these players went back to school because they got the extra year of eligibility of those super seniors, right? Did you find that you had a much larger pool of players this year to pick from because of the impact that pandemic had and really is your group much deeper because of that? 
Yeah, John, that's a, that's a great question. And we did, uh, we had a, we had a much bigger pool. So uh, the previous three years after all our work in the spring and summer was done, we had, we ended up with about, cause we'll, you know, we'll, we'll cut guys, you know, we'll reject guys too, just like the teams will, you know, if we watch a player and he's just not an NFL caliber guy, I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't even end up on the board. So, um, but we, we were on roughly around 500, a little over 500, the previous three years that stayed, uh, you know, pretty static. And then we got to this year and that number was a little over 700. So we were dealing with about 200 extra wow. names on the board this year. Um, but what's, what was interesting, it didn't really affect the top of the board. Um, it really affected like day three grades. We were like fifth through seventh. Um, the numbers were much greater and that, that made it a lot more of a challenge. Uh, you know, again, we're, we're picking our roster in November, basically in, in early December, whereas the teams and Phil Savage, my predecessor, the former Browns GM told me this. He's like, your draft is then you, you don't have till April to figure these guys out. You don't have the benefit of the combine in 40 times and you don't get the medicals and you don't get to go to pro day. Um, so, you know, it, it did when you're trying to when you're trying to make decisions on fifth through seventh round picks and bring the right ones here. Um, that was the challenge this year. Uh, you mentioned you think it's a pretty deep edge class that you have. Yeah. That's something the Giants are always looking for, extra pass rushers. So what can you tell the folks about some of the guys they should keep an eye on this week in your edge class? Yeah, a lot, a lot of disruptive guys. Um, you know, I think we, like I said, we go five, six, seven deep. Uh, I'm going to peek over the camera here and cheat a little bit at the Please board. Cheat. But, um, <laughs> you know, you just look at, you look, you go down the list and you look at like D'Angelo Malone was the defensive player of the year in conference USA. Cam Thomas from San Diego state was the Mountain West defensive player of the year. You have Jermaine Johnson from Florida state was the ACC defensive player of the year, you know, and then you've got like Maje Sanders from Cincinnati who, um, I mean, guys are going to have a really hard time getting a hand on this guy down here in terms of his like snap anticipation and, and his get off in, in the sack numbers weren't there this year, but the pressures were, um, his pressure weight rate and, and volume of pressures was off the charts. And then a kid like Kingsley Anibari and Arnold Evacchetti from Penn State, South Carolina and Penn State respectively. Uh, those are all, you know, really high end rushers. So uh, Amari Barno from Virginia Tech is like long and crazy athletic and Dominique Robinson from Miami of Ohio was a, a former wideout. He's only been playing on defense for two years and he's a 6'5", 250 pound guy that's long and athletic and fluid. Wow. Um, so that, that group from top to bottom is, is uh, you're going to find, you're going to find good pass rush help all through day two. All those guys will go on day two. Jim, do you find that teams are still really in the mode? This is a three, four edge. This is a four, three edge or are those groups with the way the game is played now kind of morphing together more and more every year. I'll say this. I think, I think coaches, I'll credit coaches in the league right now over the last probably five years um, on both sides of the ball, I think they're doing a better job of using personnel. Yeah. Um, you know, I just going back into, you know, when I started scouting around the year 2000, um, you know, you really wanted to find a specific guy that fit one thing to do, right? Like, you know, you wanted that, that, that round peg in that round hole. Uh, you know, sometimes you'd use the, the word hybrid or tweener and it almost took on a negative connotation. Yeah, for sure. um, and now, you know, with teams being more open minded, well, let's, let's, well, let's figure out a way to get this guy in the field. You know, I think we, we've had a couple guys in the game, you know, got two guys from two years ago, Kyle Duggar, um, from Lenore Ryan, from Lenore Ryan, um, small division two school and Jeremy Chin and an FCS guy from uh, Southern Illinois. Both those guys were second round picks a couple years ago. And, and, you know, you now you look at how they're being used by the, you know, uh, Duggars with the Pats and, and Chins with the Panthers. Uh, both those guys are, I mean, they're, they're playing them as big nickels inside. They're playing them at, line, you know, dime linebackers. They're playing them at safety. Just move their, their chess pieces. And I think the league's just doing a much better job of using chess pieces, if you will. So, um, yeah, I just, I, again, I think there's, they're, 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 the blurring has is, is, uh, been eliminated. You know, we're just, Coaches are doing such a better job now using those guys. You also mentioned the tight end position. Evan Ingram's a free agent for the Giants this year. Uh, Kyle Rudolph, obviously a veteran, but you know you don't know how many years he has left. What can you tell Giant fans about the tight end position and, and the types of tight ends that you have in this class? Yeah, really deep in, in a lot of different flavors. So depending on what you need, if you need you know a true F, a pass catching guy, I mean there, there's plenty of those. You got Isaiah Likely from Coastal. This guy, it's a really hot name in the league right now. Um, I referenced him earlier, a guy that Joe Shane came and checked out here in Mobile. Um, you know, uh, 
Grant Calcaterra from SMU, uh, former Oklahoma tight end, big fluid guy that can get down the seam. Uh, Greg Dulcich is a junior from UCLA who's a guy that, you know, you hit him on the move, he can run away from you and, and, and really and create big plays. You've got some guy, you know, big frame guys that could put their hand in the ground, like Jeremy Ruckert from Ohio State, Charlie Kolar from Iowa State. Um, and both those guys have more in the past game than I, I think they showed in college, especially Ruckert. Um, I think he's going to have a really big week down here. You know, Trey McBride's probably for most teams at the top of that group right now, um, playing out in the Mountain West, Colorado State. I think, you know, teams want to see what he's like against, you know, a, a higher level of competition, if you will. But, um, but Trey's super talented. Like to me, Trey, whoever drafts Trey McBride is going to, that's their starter next year. Um, you, you got a guy that you're, you're going to get on the field right away and play. So, um, and have a really big role. So, no, that, that's a really good group. I'm excited about all those guys. You know, I left out Jake Ferguson and Daniel Bellinger. Ferguson's from Wisconsin. Bellinger's from San Diego State. And they can do both. You know, like those guys are Y slash Fs um, and can really be versatile. You know, I think they could even play full, you know, come out of the backfield and play some fullback. So um, just to, we, we, we usually struggle to get to six, John, um, of guys that like we feel like are solidly draftable players at that position. And we went to nine this year. And, wow. and we feel good about those nine. We, we probably could have went to 12 um and then felt good about you know three or four more guys so uh just a really good group you know if, if, if they move on from evan ingram uh former senior bowl guy um if that's the case they, they've got plenty of good options to uh, check out down here in mobile i didn't mean to bury the lead for giant fans jim but i'm gonna have to ask you a couple questions here on the offensive line because that's one of the things the giants are really gonna have to fix in order to yeah. get the most out of daniel jones get the most out of saquon barkley and they don't have a ton of free agent money. So what are they going to have to do? They're probably going to have to draft a couple of these guys. They pick fifth and seventh, but then they have two picks in the third round. They have their second round pick. And, you know, that's where the senior bowl owns the draft, right, on day two. So who are some of these offensive linemen, both tackles and interior guys? The Giants might have four new starters next year. That Giant fan should be watching in those one-on-one -on -one drills and in the game that maybe they could add and step in right away and, and be an impactful NFL player. Yeah, you know, I go back to, to our first game here, 2019, um, and we had 10 first-rounders in that game, and five were offensive linemen, and uh, I think this group rivals that group. Actually, uh, like, we have more higher-graded guys coming into our week. I think a lot of those guys became first-rounders. I'm not saying that self-servingly. I think we had, like, four guys out of that group that really came down here and just became first-round picks by the way they performed. So you look at this year's group. I mean, Trevor Penning from Northern Iowa um, – it's going to be exciting to see how high he can climb. I think the last box he's, he needs to check is, you know, can he do it against NFL people? Because, you know, you always want small school players to look dominant on tape. Trevor's dominant. So um, he's going to have a big week. Darian Kennard from Kentucky is a guy that's played mostly tackle there. I think some teams see him as a guard. Same thing with Daniel Falele from Minnesota. Um, both those guys are huge human beings. Um, they're both light on their feet for being so big. Um, you know, Abraham Lucas is a guy from Washington state who doesn't get a lot of buzz because he's out there in the PAC 12, you know, you know, everyone out East doesn't, a lot of people don't get to stay up and see PAC 12 football, but Abe Lucas is a guy that makes it look easy in the PAC 12, um, another really good tackle prospect. And then as you move inside, like Zion Johnson kind of staying up in the, the I-95 corridor, if you will, um, from Boston college, top rated guard, top rated guard in the draft for us, um, had a great career there after transferring in from Davidson, uh, you know, extremely intelligent guy has played multiple positions. I think he's going to be a, a, a guard. Um, you know, he'll play some center down here, but I think he's going to be a pro bowl level guard um, as a pro. Um, Cole strange is kind of a, a name that the league is the league really loves a kid from Tennessee, Chattanooga um, who honestly, we just invited to the game based off his Kentucky game. Um, he went, went up against some NFL defensive linemen on Kentucky and, and wore them out um, really tough, nasty, athletic, um, he's going to play some center here. He's been more of a natural guard at, at chat, um, but he'll do some of that. So really deep group inside, outside. We, there, we could go on and on. I really like this offensive line crew. Um, they should easily be able to find two starters um, out of what, what they see here in Mobile. Jim, only two more questions for you. Uh, in addition to the O-line, D-line one-on-ones, we already covered those two groups. The wide receiver, cornerback one-on-ones, I think, are always very informative as he guys that can create space. And and frankly, if a corner is just averaging those drills, you probably pretty, feel pretty confident they're going to be a good pro because obviously that's a really tough spot with all that space for those corners to cover one-on-one. -on -one. Talk about those two groups and, and, and what are some of the matchups and some of the guys that, that fans should be excited about when those wide receivers and cornerbacks take the field against each other. 
Yeah, bringing it back to, to the Giants, like Darnay Holmes a couple of years ago from UCLA, came here as a junior, uh, he was a junior grad and, and really had a good week and won the third round. Yeah, um, and by the way, Aaron Robinson too last year. Yeah, yeah, we were big Aaron Robinson fans. Like, I thought that was a great pick. He's, uh, you know, I, I didn't get a chance to follow, I don't get a chance to follow the NFL quite as closely as I'd like during the college season because we're so locked in on what we're doing. But uh, going back a year ago, I, we loved Aaron Robinson, you know, just his flexibility to play outside and inside and safety and you know, tough, aggressive yeah, dude. Physical kid, man. Whew. Physical kid, athletic kid. Um, so, no, I, I think, he, you know, I don't know what he ended up doing for the Giants this year, but but we really liked the player when he was down here in scouting him. Um, you know, for the one-on-ones, uh, I would say Danny Gray from SMU is a name that a lot of people might not know. Really explosive kid, two years at SMU, former junior college guy, um, just scratching the surface. You put on the tape, super explosive. Uh, big time playmaker for them. And we have three SMU skilled players in this game. So again, there's one of those offenses where they had to spread the ball around a bunch, but, but Danny, when he gets in the ball, his hands, he's, he's kind of a big play waiting to happen. I think Jalen Tolbert, who's from our, you know, right in our backyard here in Mobile at South Alabama, who Joe Shane saw that day. I think that he's going to be somewhere in that, you know, uh, third, fourth round, like fringe top hundred mix right now. I think he'll elevate. Um, I think Jalen's going to play early as a pro. Uh, you know, Alec Pierce is a guy that really took off this year in Cincinnati, 6'3", 215 pounds, going to run low four fours, um, really became the go-to guy for, for Desmond Ritter on that Cincinnati team this year. And then you flip it on the other side, you know, you got, you kind of start for us locally here. Roger McCreary at Auburn is a guy that can really cover people. Um, I think he can be a really good slot. Um, he just has the ability to match routes. He's really good, really good short area quickness. And then a guy like Tariq Woolen um, is a guy that right now is under the radar. I think by the time we get to April, everyone's, he's going to be a household name when you're, if you're a draft person, um, Tariq Woolen, he's, you know, almost 6'4", 210 pound kid that's going to run in the low four threes from UTSA. He's, he, he's going to be one of the top height, weight, speed play, uh, you know, prospects in this draft. And he's a guy converted from wide out two years ago. You know, you watch his 2020 tape. You, you love the fact that he's aggressive and he's willing to put his face on people and strike people. Um, but then, but he had, you know, obviously new to position. He had a lot of, you know, instincts, things and technique stuff to clean up this year. He comes back. He's coached by a former NFL player there. And, uh, and he did clean up a lot of those things. So, um, I think those are just a couple names again, like all this stuff, John, I think we could go on and on and on. Um, uh, but those are just a few names that if I were Giants fans, I'd be, I'd be keeping an eye on. All right. Two follow-ups here, Jim. First round picks. Like I said, you guys dominate day two, but every year more and more of your guys are getting into that first round conversation. Who are some of the guys that you think with, with a really good performance this week could end up being first round picks, either back half or, or top half? Yeah, we've had 20 over the last three years. Uh, so uh, we went over the board um, with just with the five quarterbacks. That's five right there. And that's, you know, this is just based off of grades we're getting back from the league. So there's five right there. We were in the low twenties of guys that we thought could, could get there, you know, with a good, a good week in mobile, a good rest of the process. Uh, you know, and I've, I've mentioned a number of them, you know, like yep. Trevor Penning and Trey McBride and um, you know, that, that edge rush group, like I said, I think there's five or six guys out of that crew. I think Tariq Woolen, Roger McCreary. So a lot of guys we've touched on, um, but yeah, there's, there's the number of guys that we look forward to by the time we get to April, it'd be cool to hear those guys name names called in round one. Always. And the final question, this is the question I always love to ask you. Give me, I know you mentioned a couple of them already. Who are some of these small school gems? You have some division two, II, division three guys this year that you think could really show out, you know, because that's what the senior bowl does, right? You actually give these guys an opportunity to see if their physical ability can match up against these bigger power five school type of guys. Who are some of those guys that you think like the Kyle Duggars that maybe people will be talking about a lot a week from now that now fans have no idea who these guys are. That, that is, that's one of the best things about senior bowl week is, is the opportunity gives the small school guys. So like who's this year's Quinn Miners? Um, yeah, you know, exactly. Quinn is a division three guy. I mean, Quinn was, was an undrafted free agent for a lot of teams in the league coming into the week. It's really the only time in, in four years that I've deviated from, you know, where the league saw a player. I just felt like the kid needed a chance. So even, and I'm not going to sit here and say that I thought Quinn Miners would do as well as he did. And, you know, went in the third round and starting for the Broncos this year. I, I would have never even said that. I'm oh, so take upset. the credit, Jim. Take the credit. No, it's okay. <laughs> no, I'm not, Quinn, Quinn deserves all the credit there. Um, but yeah, in terms of the small school guys, like I said, Cole Strange, I think there's a number, a number of guys on the offensive line. Um, you know, Matt Willetsko from North Dakota, um, Jatiree Carter from Southern, Nick Sakel from In Your Backyard at Fordham. 
um, is a really cool player on the outside. So that offensive line crew is uh, is, is really loaded. So um, I'd, I'd say those guys, I think a couple guys at corner, um, Greg Jr., a kid from Wachita Baptist, uh, is, a, is, a, is an athletic corner that we're, we're excited to see what what Greg can do down here. You know, he actually just, he performed this week at the NFL PA bowl and, and thank God heard he had a great week. So <laughs> I'm happy that he's, he's coming off a good week out there. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a number of these guys, Christian Watson from North Dakota state, a big wide receiver, a guy that can really, really roll six, four, 215 pound guy, kind of like Alec Pierce from Cincinnati, a big guy that can really stretch the field and run. Like he, he's playing at a totally different speed than, than the guys in his conference in FCS. So um, those are just a few, but I know there's going to be some cool names emerge during the week. That's always, you know, a really part, a really fun part of the week. And when you see those guys Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, start to uh, start to make a name for themselves. Yeah, Jim, can't wait to be out there practice and watch it in person. Can't wait to see you down there. Thanks so much for the time. Best of luck. And tell the folks, this is your chance. Promote anything you want to promote, where they check things out, where they should go. Tell everybody what they need to know about your senior bowl. Yeah, if you just if you follow us on Twitter, uh, my my personal Twitter, Jim Nagy underscore SB, Senior Bowl Twitter at Senior Bowl. Uh, we'll be posting behind the scenes stuff all week, you know, kind of stuff in the in the player meeting areas, and really kind of trying to give you an inside look at what's going on there. We'll be posting all the measurables from we're doing weigh-ins at registration this year. So if you want to know really how big these guys are and how uh, how long they are, uh, we'll be posting all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, just check in with uh, real-time updates on our, on our Twitter feed is what I'd say. Jim, can't wait to see you next week, man. Thanks so much. All right, John. Thanks. Travel safe, man. Thank you. Jim Nagy, Executive Director of the Reese's Senior Bowl. We thank him for joining us, previewing the game next week, and talking to the New York Giants. I'm John Schmuck. We'll see you next time on the Giants Huddle Podcast.